Hey guys, well, here I am. We're back at it. We're working out here. Forgive me, I'm recording this from in my studio today because I forgot to record it while I was out there. Um, but anyways, uh, so in the background, what you're watching me do right now is I am working on dimpling skins, lots of skins to dimple. You've seen me do it a million times and we've taught, we've had the argument before about DRDT2 versus the whack-a-mole. Again, I'm staying with the DRDT2. I still think the dimple dyes really make all the difference, not how you're implying or imparting the dimple. Um, but while I'm doing that, <clears throat> I thought I would talk about some news. Um, so I have two pieces of news that I would like to share. And you may already know where this is going, but long story short is I have quit drinking coffee. <laughs> um, so for health reasons, I have stopped drinking coffee basically because of the caffeine. Now, all of you know that, are, especially my patrons, I say if you want to become a patron and help me support this channel for a little dollar a month, you can jump over to my patron page and support me by giving me that dollar and think of it as buying me a cup of coffee over the internet. Well, I'm not drinking coffee anymore. Um, so beer. Yeah. Um, long story short is I'm having some heart palpitations and really crappy sleep and just not feeling good, overheating, and just blah. And my uh, doctor seems to think that it's the caffeine. And he asked me, he's like, do you, do you drink a lot of coffee? And I'm like, well, yeah. And I got to thinking about it. Uh, I started really heavily drinking coffee back in 1991 when I joined the military. And all of you that have been in the military know about the mud that they serve you there. Uh, I have drunk a thermos of coffee literally for 30 years uh, daily. And so uh, this was a bit of a change, uh, caffeine interruptus, uh, headache maximus. Um, it was really bad for several days. I, so I've quit cold turkey. Uh, I quit cold turkey five days ago, and the last four days have been absolutely brutal uh, with regards to the headache. Now, today I woke up, and I feel great. So awesome. Um, but we're, this is all about getting healthier and being more fit and whatnot. Uh, my wife and I have made the decision to purchase a Nordic track, uh, exercise bike, sort of like the Peloton where they do the class in front of you and you can do these cool rides and all this other stuff. It's a little cheaper than the Peloton. Peloton's a little expensive, but we're going to do that. And, and I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be awesome. Just trying to get fit. You know, I'm getting older. I'm not getting... Oh, not getting any healthier. So that's what's going on there. That's that's one of the big pieces of news that I wanted to share with you guys um, while I work in the background because what I'm doing right now is not exciting. Uh, there's a lot of me running around and drilling. All I'm doing is countersinking and countersinking, and then after I'm done with it, I get another part and countersink it. That's There's a million things to countersink and dimpling. I even think I said in the last video I still have a ton of stuff to countersink. Oh, there's a ton. Um... The other piece of news that I would like to go into, and I don't normally talk about this all that often on this channel because I don't like to bring up politics or any of this other stuff, is, and here I'm going through and I'm trying to figure out what part goes where. Like the instructions around this were, they weren't complicated. It's just there's a lot of moving parts. So you had to kind of figure it out. And then once I get the part and figure out which one it wants and figure out which side I'm supposed to be using, then I'm back to countersinking. <laughs> So anyways, the other thing I wanted to talk about, and like I said, I don't normally talk about this sort of thing, is law enforcement. Um, I have gone ahead and retired from law enforcement. I don't, I, I know you guys are not really interested. You're here to look at a plane. You're not interested in learning about law enforcement. Basically, though, in short, I feel I need to say this uh, because some of you do comment and say really nice things. Thank you. But just due to where we are in the world, where my family is, I just don't feel it's safe and conducive as a man approaching 50 years old to continue to be on patrol, uh, especially in the current political climate of all the things that are going on. And that is not to indict any officer or, or anyone or say anything negative. It's just my personal opinion that it's not the career field that I want to be in anymore. So I've gotten out of it and uh, I think it's for the best. I'm, I'm way happier. Everyone says not that I was unhappy before, but yeah, it is what it is. And I can go into it in more details if you want me to. It's just generally I don't know that you guys want to talk about that stuff. I absolutely have my opinions. So anyways, with that, I know you guys are here to see about the plane. So let's keep talking about the plane. Um, so right now what I'm doing is I'm going through and I am deburring. So after you do all the countersinking of all the parts, you got to go back through and deburr everything. And at this point, 
I try to deburr as I go, um, but there's so much. I mean, you cannot possibly do all the deburring that you're going to need to do uh, during this part of the plane. You're going to have to do it during this phase. And he even says there's like there's a whole line uh, item on one of the pages that says deburr all the things. And so yeah, you're you're going to be in there with your deburr tool and your polishing wheels and and your your stuff and you're just. Ugh it takes a long time and it's not fun. So just know that that's a thing that's going on that I'm sparing you guys of. And then once I'm done deburring everything, I go get another part and can countersink it again because more countersinking. Oh, the excitement. Oh yes. So right here, um, <laughs> not only do you have to countersink by pulling parts off the plane and go through and countersinking it, there are then parts on the plane that you have now uh, they're already riveted on and you have to now go countersink them. And you might be tempted to think, I should have countersunk this when I first installed it way back when because it would have been easier. No. And the reason for that is because you have to um, do the match drilling with the skins in, in the case of the pieces that I'm doing. And so you cannot do it beforehand because you're just going to end up screwing your match drilling up. Uh, now, one other thing you're going to uh, see me doing here is I'm going to be working on uh, some parts that are very, there's a gnat in here. <laughs> there's, you're going to see me working on some parts that are right up against the spars. Um, and the, the cage on my drill for my countersink tool can't quite fit in there. And so I had to come up with a creative solution to get to them. Uh, and I also had to pull those bolts out one at a time to try to get in there. And unfortunately I lost some of that footage, but here, let me, let me talk to what I'm going to do creatively. Okay possible mistake admitting time. Um, this piece that goes up here, I went ahead and I countersunk all of it and that was a mistake. And the reason that was a mistake is because I haven't actually done the top skin yet. So the skin comes down over the top here across these top uh, holes. The bottom skin I've already done, but I didn't do the top ones yet. And I went ahead and countersunk them. Oops. Um, that was a mistake. I should not have done that. I didn't do the other side, but I did do this one side. So we'll see how that pans out. Actually, it goes like this. Uh, it could be one of those situations where it's no big deal. Everything's going to be fine. It could all be also be something that's going to be painful. <laughs> so uh, we'll find out the deal there. Um, the other thing is, this is not necessarily a mistake, but let me show you. You can see here, I can't get all some of these holes uh, just due to being real close to here. And so I am going to use this guy. Um, so this is my handheld uh, deburring tool with an extension on it. And remember I had talked about the threading. So this is the deburring head here. Uh, the threading on this is the same threading on that cage countersink tool. So I'm gonna put that on here and then just gently and slowly go by hand and measure the depth and everything. So we're gonna do that by hand. I should have full access with everything else. I just can't get my drill in there. So that's what I'm doing and you're probably watching right now. Okay, on to step number three of 2915, which is removing the hatch area from the skin right here. So that's basically this guy. I got to remove this door. Um, now this skin, this part of the door, I'm 100% sure will be used as the door itself. So I need to be very careful when I remove it. I'm going to use the Dremel to cut all these little points. I do have shears, like one of the things that a lot of, um, a lot of different kits will give you are left and right shears. I just don't find them very useful. They're kind of big and bulky and it's hard to get in to little slits like this. So not gonna do that. <clears throat> Once we get that done, the next step is to enlarge a hole right here. So this hole right here is for wiring. Um, and it says, uh, enlarge the wiring run location on these skins for a snap bushing that will accommodate the wires and pressure lines coming from the wing, deburr, install, 
um, but because the custom size of the snap bushing is not provided by the kit. So basically they don't actually provide that bushing and for good reason. I mean, they don't know how much wiring and crap you're going to have coming through your wing. So they don't know how big you're going to make this hole. Uh, so I'm actually going to pause and not do that yet. I can do that once it's in place. Um, again, for the same reason, I don't know how many wires and whatnot, you know, one side's going to have the pitot tube in, in the airport and whatnot. The other side is not going to have that. So it doesn't need to be as big. So things like that. <clears throat> um, so I'm going to not do that just yet. Uh, I will get to that once I get my wings done, which I need to do. Uh, but for now, I'm going to cut out this hatch and then go to the next page. Well, by the way, the, the next step is prime everything if you want to. I don't. We've talked about that before. But the next step is going to be, yeah, starting assembling everything. <laughs> okay, let's, let's get to cutting. And then I went through and I used my Dremel with just a cutoff wheel and I sat there and I cut all those little connection points. There were a bunch. Go slow, make sure you have a good firm footing uh, for the skin to sit on. In this case, I had it on my table and I still managed to blow up one of the discs. Um, aluminum grabs. I don't know if you guys have done a bunch, uh, any amount of work with aluminum and those uh, cutting discs with Dremels, but it, I mean, it, it gets away from you so quick, you can't control it. And it grabs and that disc just shatters. Um, so wear face protection. I didn't, and luckily none of it hit me, but uh, yeah, whatever. So anyways, once I do that, I then actually went and got those shears that I just talked about. And I stood over it and I had the camera on my head, which I know you guys hate, but I tried to be real still as I cut the little nubbins off. So so you've got, you've got the pieces of aluminum on either side and that connection, I cut right in the middle of the connection to try not to touch either side of the skin. Then I cleaned up the skin by using first the shears to cut it down so it's flush, and then did all the rest of the kind of deburring and cleaning of the sides of that skin like I normally do. Uh, and that's what you're just gonna have to do. So that's what happened there, and it came out really nice actually. I, I can't wait to, to get this, this Thing painted up and whatnot because I don't think you'll ever know. All right, well, so with that, what I'm doing in the background is I'm going through and I'm disassembling the various bits that I need to disassemble in preparation for final assembly. So we finally have gotten to the point where we've deburred all the things, we've countersunk and dimpled everything that should be countersunk and dimpled, we've match drilled, we've got all the stuff together, and now it's the, the, the begins the process of final assembly of all the parts. And it seems like it took forever to get here. Um, that's just how it is. Don't rush it. Uh, it just takes a long time. And then you'll see me, you know, in the beginning, I kind of pre prepped where I was working, but then I like literally would go pull apart and then go read it and like put a rivet and then go read the instructions and put another rivet and read the instructions to make sure. There's a lot of, hey, let's make sure we do this correctly at this stage because now you're kind of at the point of no return because once you put a part on and you've riveted that sucker in place and then you go back and you're like, oh wait, no, you're supposed to do this other one first. Well, now you may not be able to do the other one, you know? So it's, the, the, you have to go in the order that is in the plans because if you don't, you literally could screw yourself. And I mean, you, you could conceivably have to drill out a lot of rivets to, 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 to fix your mistake and you know as we well know drilling out rivets it's not a fun process and it's generally not a good process but anyways uh so yeah i go through i do all the things i'm mostly working on the back side and then working my way forward on the back side you got those upper upper uh, sepal brackets and the various uh rear seat attachments there are a couple rivets that you leave out on the side with the door where the hinge will be those are really well delineated and easy to do. Uh, just make sure you do have the correct rivet in the correct hole because there are varying lengths of rivets based on how much metal's there, uh, of course. But uh, I do get some close-ups, as you saw, of what that all looks like. But then it's just a matter of putting it all together. And yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. The front that you see me working on is um, a little difficult. Uh, so one thing... Uh, I have to do often is change the head of my squeezer to one of the other squeezers so I, or one of the other yokes so I can, you know, get in there and do stuff. 
just sometimes you got to change it. Don't try to do it with the wrong tool. If you got to change it, change it. You don't need to, to tighten those things down super tight. You can hand tighten those yokes when you put them on there. Uh, but so that's it, guys. I'm going to cut this one here. I really appreciate you guys. I'm going to continue to work on this. I have a lot more to put together uh, on the front of this thing. Uh, like two more pages, I think, before we actually start looking at doing some serious merging of the empennage and the fuselage. Uh, but yeah, hopefully that'll happen here real soon. Anyways, thank you very much. If you guys do me a favor, click that like button and subscribe button. If you want to see anything down below, feel free to comment. I would love to answer questions. And of course, if you want to help support this channel, if you jump over to my Patreon page for just a dollar a month, you can help support me. Uh, think of it as buying me a beer over the internet. I like beer. You could buy me a beer over the internet. Thanks guys. I'll see you next time.